Ever since Asian cooking became popular in the West, woks have been putting in over time. So today, we are going to send this wok off to his much needed vacation. We're going to pack this tight. <laughs> Make sure this ties you, and I'm gonna give it to Margaret. Margaret, make sure this guy travel first class. <laughs> Today, we're gonna use a few of the very traditional, unusual ingredients and also traditional, unusual cooking utensils that you normally don't see in an average kitchen. Here, I'm gonna do a dish I call double steamed chicken with Chinese herbs. We're gonna cut up some mushroom, okay? This black mushroom, we're gonna cut it up. It, it doesn't matter how many pieces and how big a piece you cut it. You can cut it into one, two pieces, three pieces, one, two, three. Or four pieces. One, two, three, four. Or five. One, two, three, four, five. Or six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And also, we're gonna use a tiny, tiny bit of, of nice dry cure ham. This is Smithfield ham. You can use yin and ham. You cut it up into small chunks. This will give the flavor to our dish. And also, a couple piece of a small piece of lean pork, okay? Slightly parboil, blanch, water blanch in water for about a minute or so. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, set it aside, okay? Also some boneless, skinless chicken, also partially water blanch. Cut it up into small pieces. This will give some substance, good protein to our dish, and then, also have what they call the dragon's eye. This is longan, dry longan, looks like this. This is a fruit, looks like lychee, tastes like lychee. And of course, we are gonna have some variety, a few variety of Chinese herbs. You have dong guai, and you have a lot of these are roots. Some of them are barks, some of them are blossom and leaves, a variety of roots. You go to a Chinese herbal shop, you see up to five, six thousand different variety of Chinese herbs. The Chinese believe, everybody know, the Chinese believe in holistic healing. When you don't feel good, you, instead of going to a regular doctor, you go to a Chinese herbalist. They ask to take your pulse, to look at your eye, look at your complexion, and they ask you to stuck your tongue out and say, ah! Oh! <laughs> so this way, they know what to prescribe. And they give you a prescription. And you go to the Chinese pharmacist. They give you a whole bunch of this kind of variety of herbs. And all of these are natural ingredients. Natural plants, animals, and all kinds of things dehydrated. And everybody know, all the things that you have, you see in Chinese restaurant, a lot of them, a lot of them you see are basically have a different composition of mineral, vitamins, and irons, and all this stuff. So if you put the right thing together, it's good for you, okay? Here, we're gonna put all of this in this, what I call the yin and air pot. One lamb, four wall. It looks like this inside. You see the little chimney, small chimney hole here? When you turn to the other side, see a bigger hole here? The steam, we'll put this on top of steam like this. The steam will shoot up here, and will cook your food. Okay, so first thing we'll do is put all this ingredient inside here, okay? The meat and the mushroom and the herbs. Soak the herb a little bit, put them all together, and then you fill it in with water, clean water, tap water. Put it right in here, okay? Just enough. If this is not enough, it's no good. So we're gonna put more water right here. Okay, and then you come back here and fill it up. Okay, when this is nice and done, you cover it up and you let the steam shoot up. Let the steam cook the content, the water, the herbs and everything. That's why you call double steam. Now, look at this. I have done one a little bit earlier, nice and hot. <laughs> it is hot. Now here, a lot of people say, why double steam? Why not? Here, you double date. 
Ah, you double clutch. Ah, you even double pack. Ah, why not double steam? <laughs> this is traditionally when you serve this. Traditionally, you only drink the liquid. Okay, because the Chinese believe if you drink the liquid and eat the meat, the meat would absorb the liquid, so it's no good. This is the essence of all this broth, and this very rich. A lot of herbs, a lot of vitamin, a lot of mineral. Come over here. It's good for people just recover from an ailment. And this is wonderful because it's very rich. Traditionally, we do that, but for me, not only I can drink this for my heart, I also eat the chicken and the meat for my stomach. <laughs> I bet, I bet you cannot guess what this is. I got this from my favorite bakery in Chinatown. Let's see what it does. One of my favorite festivals, when I was growing up in China, is Moon Festival around mid-autumn. The Ba Yu Sa mm. To celebrate, we prepare a great variety of special moon cake. The most common fillings for most of these moon cakes are sweet black bean paste, brown sweet lotus seed paste, sweet mung bean paste, black date with walnut. We're gonna make a lot of moon cake right now. You start with a smooth dough made with cake flour and syrup. Then you knead it until they're nice and smooth. Roll into a cylindrical tube like this, and then you break it up. We'll use this for the moon cake skin. And then you use a tiny bit of flour coated with the working counter and flatten it up into a nice circular, like a one-ton wrapper, okay? Look at this. And then you use a baseball size sweet lotus seed paste. Put it right in the middle. Wrap it up. Wrap up the whole thing. Look at all this expert hand. Make sure you entirely enclose this particular sweet lotus bean paste. Then you put in this cake mold. Look at this cake mold. Put in this cake mold. And then press it down. And then you will be able to get it out by banging it on the table. Marvelous cake. Look at how beautiful this is. Mooncakes come in many different sizes and shapes. I guess you can call this a full moon. And this one, half moon. And this one, a baby moon. And this is also a moon cake but it is square. Perhaps it was made by a moonlighting carpenter. Once you get the hang of it, it does not take too many moons to make an entire galaxy of moon cakes. But it will take me too many moons to try to eat all of these alone, even with my cousins. So I guess I'm gonna bring some of these back to the studio audience. See, I promise I bring some back to you. I'm glad that when they make this, they didn't break this mold. I want to show you how quick and how easy this is. See this dough? You put it right over here. Push it down. Push it down. 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 Okay? And then you go, ha, ha, ha. Look at this. <laughs> So simple, piece of cake. <laughs> We're gonna put it over there. And the next thing I want to show you is a very, very exciting dish. I'm gonna show you how to do a Korean barbecue beef. And I call bulgogi. This is how they call bulgogi in Korean cuisine. This particular dish is very easy to do. When you go to a Korean restaurant, there's so much beef barbecuing in Korea. This is probably the closest thing to Texas cooking in Asia. I wonder how they say, howdy partner <laughs> in Korean. <laughs> now, here is a piece of beef. I have about one pound of tender beef, okay? And I cut it very thin slice. Look at this, parallel cutting technique. Parallel cutting technique. 
just to show you how thin this is. I'm not kidding. This is thin. Look at this. You continue to do this, okay? Why I'm cutting this up? Cut this all up into very, very thin pieces. The more people, the more pieces you have to do. Just make sure you do this when you are totally alert. <laughs> and don't do this when you are half asleep. Okay, make sure, put them all together. Then you can do a whole bunch of these, a whole bunch of these. I'm quite sure many of you have tried and love Korean cuisine because it's quite interesting. After this, we're gonna marinate this. And why we marinate this, I'm gonna also heat up this Genghis Khan grill. Can you see this Genghis Khan grill? They shape like the head of those people they wear in Mongolia, Genghis Khan, this dome shape. So we're gonna cook it right on top of here. I use approximately three to four tablespoons of soy sauce. Time with a minced green onion. If you need more green onion, all you have to do is go, ah! People say, you can go, can you go faster? If I go faster than this, you won't be able to see it. So I slow down. And also, we're gonna use a lot of garlic because this is good for garlic flavor, okay? A lot of people think Italian restaurant. How do they use a lot of garlic in an average Korean meal? It's a garlic festival. <laughs> garlic, more garlic, garlic, more garlic, and more garlic. This is how you mince garlic once again. Great exercise, smashing ex exercise. Also put a tiny bit of ginger and dry sherry. Also a tiny bit of sesame seed oil, half a teaspoon of sesame seed oil. Put a tiny bit of sugar. Also a tiny bit of black pepper and a few sesame seed, okay? Toast the sesame seed, marinate this, marinate all of them, and then you can grill them. Look at this, you are gonna be able, let it marinate for about half an hour, hour and a half, two hours, two days, <laughs> two years? No, <laughs> doesn't have to be so long, okay? When this is nice and done, we're gonna put it over here, we're gonna grill this in this Mongolian, what they call Genghis Khan grill. Wow, can you hear the sizzling sound at home? Isn't it exciting or what? Okay, look at this. It's very easy to do, it's delicious. We're gonna cook a whole bunch. This way, not only we have enough for the entire studio audience, we still have enough to send it to you at home. Why I'm waiting for this to get ready, I'm gonna show you another very, very popular dish. You cannot imagine having a meal in Korea without having kimchi. Just like, if you don't have kimchi, just like eat Chinese food without rice. This particular, I use a one to one and a half pound of this napa cabbage. Look at this, napa cabbage. Now, why I'm talking about this? I hear the sizzling sound in my bulgogi, telling me we better turn it upside down. So we'll turn it upside down. Otherwise, you're gonna have end cut charcoal burn bulgogi. Make sure you turn, look at how beautiful this is, huh? This is great. The good thing about this, if you see the design of this, the juice and the sauce will drip down. And later on, when you cook a whole lot, all you have to do is collect the juice and put it and serve the juice on top of the meat. It's very easy to do. I have used about two to three tablespoons of salt, and I mix it with this napa cabbage, and I squeeze the water out. Good finger exercise. <laughs> I am having fun. <laughs> Get all the water out. Let me show you, there's actually water coming out from here. You get rid of the water because we're gonna use this bowl to marinate our napa cabbage to make our marvelous, delicious kimchi. In this particular dish, all I have is soy sauce, marinated with soy sauce, okay? Approximately one tablespoon of soy sauce, some sesame seed oil, 
two teaspoons of salt, sesame seed oil, some Sichuan peppercorn. I make this a little bit Chinese, so I use Sichuan peppercorn, okay, toasted. And also use chili powder, about a teaspoon or so. This is going to be hot. That's the reason why you go to a, a Korean restaurant, when people eat, they don't talk because their lips, the tongues and cheek on fire. <laughs> oh, to make it look dangerous, you also use this dry pepper just to look dangerous. And also put some green onion to get some flavor. And then some garlic, one tablespoon of garlic, chopped garlic, tiny bit of ginger. And also use a tiny, tiny bit of rice vinegar, quarter of a cup of rice vinegar, okay? This way, mix them all up. After that, you put in this, one of these presser, okay? Put it in here, look at this. And then you press it, exert some weight. You press it, squeeze the water out. Now, if you want to make it faster, and you don't have nothing to do, sit tight, add some more weight, sit on it, and read a book. Look at this. Just press it. Press it, see? I press it. After you press it, traditionally, in many parts of Southeast Asia, after they do this, they bury this in a big urn and put it underground. So you can take it out anytime you want. It's just like a, cap a time capsule, you know? <laughs> when it's done, you take it out. And you serve these, it looks like this. Look at this. We'll show you how you can serve a dish. Our bulgogi is done. One, two, three. This is very delicious, very light, very easy to do, and nobody can mess up. Okay, look at this. And when it's done, you can also scoop up some of this kimchi. I love this, this is good. Hot and spicy and give you that punch. This is what I call kimchi with bulgogi in a beautiful platter. <laughs> the kimchi is so good and so hot, it gives my nose a punch. The best way to clear up your sinus. The next dish I'm gonna do is lamb in a Mongolian fire pot. Look at this beautiful Mongolian hot pot. I want to give you a lesson on the anatomy of the fire pot. This is the lid. And underneath this lid, you boil your broth. This is the broth, okay? And when you lift up your broth, you see this chimney? Oh, hot. Never do that. <laughs> and you take this up, and all you have to do is put the charcoal on the mesquite or external here, they will heat up the broth over here. If you want to make sure that it heats up faster, you cover this up first. Now, besides this, this always come with little baskets like this. You see this little basket? Everybody cooks their own food. It is a dish like you invite participation. Everybody cooks. This is a saying. Too many cooks spoil the broth. In this case, more cooks better the broth <laughs> because the richness of the meat and all the flavor will sit in the broth, okay? So you just cook your own. And how can you gain weight to eat things in this little basket? <laughs> if you're on a diet, you don't worry because you become a basket case before you gain any weight. <laughs> we are going to, to make it easy because some of you do not have this. So we are not gonna do it right here because we're gonna show you, you can easily do it in a regular wok or frying pan. Here, in this frying pan here, I've heated up some broth, very light broth, okay? And here, I have all this ingredient. I have shrimp, cellophane noodle. Now this is soaked cellophane noodle. Make sure to show you how to do it, okay? Here, I have a bowl of water. This is dry cellophane noodle, made from mung bean flour. You soak them in water for approximately 
15 to 20 minutes. And then when they soften, you break it up, okay? Let it soak this up and move them around. When they soften, then you can cook it. It's very easy to do, okay? Cellophane noodle. And then also I'm going to have some shrimp and some lamb, okay? You can use any meat. You can use any seafood. I'm going to show you quickly how I'm going to remove the shell. One, two, okay? Remove the whole thing, comes out like this. Very easy. Then you devein this by putting you your knife. Butterfly, see this? And then you can see the vein. Remove the vein, okay? And put it right over here so nobody can see. <laughs> and then you can have all of these around. I also have some spinach. You can use watercress. You can use tofu and also some of this green onion. When you cook, this is how you cook it. Put a little piece. Look at this. Put all these little baskets. Everybody have, have their own basket. And everybody have their own bowl so they can eat out of it. And then you put the prawn, okay, in the basket. I like prawn, okay. If you like lamb, I put the lamb in the basket, okay? Now, if you're on a diet, but you want to participate, you put nothing in there and cook, <laughs> okay? This way, you can never gain weight. How can you gain weight? There's nothing to eat. And also, I want to put some of the cellophane noodle right in here, whole thing. Put it right over here. And I put some spinach, okay? Put it right in here. Just like doing fondue. I call fondue, fondue, because it is fun to do. <laughs> and then we put also a little, some people also like lettuce, so we put a whole piece of lettuce. And we cook more shrimp and a piece of meat. And when it's nice and done, all you have to do is make some sauce and prepare the sauce ahead of time so everybody can serve different sauce. Now here, I want to show you, we're going to show you, we're going to make a tiny bit of sauce over here. Everybody can see. Here, I have some chicken broth. I'm going to put all my sauce in a little pet walk here. I put a tiny bit of water here, some chili paste. This is what you call the hot and spicy sauce. Some garlic, okay, some cilantro some ginger, okay, and also a tiny bit of white pepper and also soy sauce. This is a hot and spicy sauce, okay. You put over here, you put them around this wonderful Mongolian fried pot. Hold the sauces. Soy mustard sauce, hot and spicy sauce, ketchup. This is plum sauce. And also, this is a tiny bit of broth with a tiny bit of wine, a tiny bit of soy sauce. That means you can create your own sauce. You can do anything you want. It doesn't make any difference. When you're ready to do, you put all this here, and you can even serve with a tiny bit of pickle, okay? When this is done, you scoop out a tiny bit of this broth. Look at this. Tiny bit of this broth. That's why the more you cook, the more it is tasty. And then you get a chopstick, pick up some of these, pick up some cellophane noodle. Look at this, some cellophane noodle. You have to get up the third floor to try to grab this done thing. <laughs> and then you put the lamb, the shrimp, everything right here, and you, when you serve, <laughs> all you have to do is dip this in into whatever sauce you want, just like a fondue. Now, I don't care if my walk takes a long vacation because with all this walkless wonder, we are going to eat well anyway, so until next time, if Yen can cook, so can you. Joy Gin.